Okay, you asked about what happens if there's not a line that goes from uh, the center down to one of the sides, or in this case, uh, this line is, you can either either call it an apothem or an apothem. I tend to call it an apothem. If you are given a radius, that's very convenient. If you're not, it's not that big of a deal. Now, um, the idea is that I can still figure it out by using a little bit of trigonometry. You're going to end up using the tangent function here which is really easy to do. If you struggle, by the way, with the tangent thing, if you go back into the channel, you can see that um, there is a, stuff, uh, a few explanations about how to do tangent, sine, and cosine. I even have two different methods. There's like the regular one and then this modified version called tan on the hand that you might like. Anyway, whatever, whatever. The idea is we can get this length, which is what we need to figure out what the area of the bottom is, because I've been breaking them in these videos down into triangles, so you use area equals uh, one-half base times height. The conglomeration of this, uh, or the do sum of all these together, since there'll be six of those triangles, is six times this, or you could just use the area of a regular uh, polygon formula, which is one-half apothem or apothem times perimeter. But either way, you still need this. If you're using this formula, it would be the bay or the height. And if you use this, it is the, uh, the A here. Now, we can figure it out because we just need to find this angle. If you notice, when I make this angle, it's actually splitting this major angle or uh, interior angle of the hexagon into two equal parts. This is bisecting the angle to create it. Now, what we're going to do to figure out what this angle is, is just determine how many are the sum of all the angles inside that hexagon. So you can either use the formula n minus 2 times 180, or you can look at how it how we come about that formula in the first place. So I've got my hexagon, right? I need to know how much all the angles are added together. I know that a triangle has 180 degrees inside. So what if I just broke that uh, hexagon into little triangles that go from one point all the way across, so you have to have like little diagonals. One, two, three, and the leftover will give me four. So inside that hexagon, that's terribly small to see, so I'll try to write it at least a little bit bigger, right? One, two, three, four. As you can see, there's four triangles inside of a hexagon. So to figure out how many degrees are inside the whole thing, you would just do four times 180. That's where the formula comes from because when you make interior triangles or whatever, when you make triangles from the diagonal inside that figure, you're really taking uh, the number of sides. And since this does going from here to here doesn't make one, and going from here to here doesn't make one, you're subtracting two from that number. So it's six minus two times 180. Anyway, working that out, that gives me 720 degrees inside each regular hexagon. Well, that has some value for us because if we look back over here, I just want to know what one of those angles is. So I'm going to divide 720 by the number of internal angles, which is 6. So using my amazingly lame late night math skills, that seems like 120 degrees would be the angle measure for any angle inside that hexagon. It's pretty simple, right? So the big angle is 120. Now, when I make my little interior triangle here, I'm breaking that 120 into e two equal parts, one that makes up the angle inside the triangle, and then, you know, kind of whatever's left over there. So I'm going to pop out that triangle and make it look a little bit bigger, and then I'm going to move the camera. By the way, the camera is hanging off of a piece of string, and I'm using a baby bottle to keep it steady. So I apologize for the low quality. Anyway, so I have 60 degrees here. I'm looking for x. All I would need is another side, and I have the other side. If we go back to the original picture, this line is breaking this side into two equal parts. So since the whole thing is 6, that makes my internal side, or the little triangle side, worth 3. And uh, from here, I can find out what this side is just by using the tangent, because I have the opposite side and the adjacent side, because it's the side that's making the angle and the one opposite, the uh, hypotenuse is not has no value to us at this point. So what we're going to do is just do tangent of 60 degrees equals opposite of which is x over 3. 
Now, I can do uh, that little bit in my calculator, so I'll type in 60. I need to make sure that I'm in, I am in degrees, good. Tangents, uh, 60 tangent, and then times 3. And that gives me 5.19, so I'm going to say it's 5.2, being very lazy. So my x value is 5.2. Now I can take that value, which is the line that we were looking for, and plug it back into either one of these formulas just like I did in the original video and then you should be able to get the right answer. So use a little tangent uh, in there and dividing and the interior angle formula and you should be really uh, able to get these right very consistently. So I hope this is helpful and if it's not maybe I'll get better equipment at some point.